Hello guys, my name is Amit Sani and I welcome you in this daily Hindu last video in the morning. These videos come in the evening, the PIB videos come. And daily we are getting these videos in both the languages and we are discussing important questions. So please do not miss these videos. And uh, only 10, 11 days are left uh, if you are appearing in this year's prelims examination. So the compilation of these questions that we had discussed in the last five months that would be very very crucial here and uh, in the pib lesson these days uh, these are all questions and uh, important details so please do not miss that lesson also and uh, today uh, uh, many articles are there we'll, we will discuss the paper and these are the numbers there you can call and you can ask for these pendrive courses and here the website address is given all these courses are available at 60 percent off and all are uh, created by created by experts so you can uh, subscribe to all these courses chat section is available at uh, this uh, website and you can ask all your queries now questions that i gave to you on saturday malabar civet it's not a reptile it's a mammal and it's a critically endangered mammal so this is wrong it's in schedule one of the wpa 1972 act and the highest level of protection is given here that is correct so only two is the correct answer here and you see malabar means it is the malabar coast you see in india uh, the Malabar coast is uh, this, this is the Coromandel coast, this is Malabar coast. So in this region, in Kerala, in these uh, hills at, up to Cardamom hills, all these uh, important uh, Vainar forest area and the Nilgiri part, there this Malabar civet was found. But only 250 mature in individuals are left now and under this IOC and red list, it is counted as critically endangered animal okay habitat destruction is the main issue and hunting is also the important issue mangala kurti bala kurti donda punugina these are also the local names for this malabar civet red panda you see you must have heard about the panda the great uh, uh, the giant panda of china you see the picture this is chinese panda this is a different species and this red panda this is red panda it's like a small cat so this red panda is a mammal native to the eastern himalayas and southwestern china that is correct it is endangered that is also correct but it is not called the giant panda giant panda is the chinese panda that is there in the central uh, chinese region so second is wrong first is correct so only one is the correct answer here you can see specific gate is a is a gate is it has and the domestic cat like appearance is there arboreal means lives on for uh, these uh, trees and all but mainly it's a solitary animal and uh, active from dusk to dawn so in the night time it is uh, active and the uh, issue is that it is a carnivorous animal but this giant panda it is 99 percent herbivorous means 99 percent occasions it eats uh, foliages and uh, lives on trees so that's the uh, main difference here also and you see this is found in uh, india also but, but this giant panda is not found in india so this is giant panda and it is red panda okay remember the difference always it belongs to the bears category and uh, beer families and uh, this is not related to this giant panda remember that maybe the names are same but uh, this is not the real panda now un sasakawa award it is given in the field of disaster risk reduction recently the is officer from odisha he was given this uh, Sasakawa award in Geneva this year when on 17th of uh, May this uh, event was concluded the GP DRR the global uh, platform that that summit uh, happened in seven, on 17th of May this year and Dr. Pramod Kumar Mishra he was given this Sasakawa award it was established in 86 by founding chairman of the Nippon foundation the Mr. Roichi Sasakawa so Japanese person and this award was very important and you see Japan uh, connection is there because Japan is the most vulnerable countries uh, most vulnerable country in this world if you talk about the disasters mainly earthquakes uh, these uh, volcanoes and all types of tsunamis and all kinds of destructions Japan has seen in the past so Japan has a, a clear connection here with the disasters and uh, the Sendai framework is also going on and Sendai is also a city in Japan before that Hyogo framework was there Hyogo is also a city in Japan now GPDRR the related issue here uh, the summit of gpdrr only happened in geneva where the award was given so gpdrr was established by un general assembly that is correct biennial meeting once in two years fifth one happened in mexico in 17 and sixth happened in geneva in switzerland it just uh, three four days back on 17th of may 
so latest was held not in japan it was in geneva so one and two is correct and uh, three third statement is wrong so a is the answer here next christ church call to action is related to christ church call that was an a kind of, kind of a online initiative and it was taken after the easter day attack in sri lanka because it was the issue of radicalization because it was the issue of extremism so uh, they decided to curb all these things on the internet platform where uh, the extremism and the radicalization is spread through the way of social media where they are radicalizing the vulnerable youth through social media so that has become the biggest threat we cannot uh, uh, ban internet we cannot ban these all these websites so it's a concern but the artificial intelligence and the machine learning they may help here one article is also uh, given related to this social media issue and Christchurch wa call was related to online terrorism issue online radicalization issue so d is the answer here first state in asia to legalize gay marriage or the homosexual marriage that is taiwan taiwan uh, says that it's a separate country autonomous country but china does not recognize taiwan as a country it says that it's a part of china only and it uh, counts it as autonomous region in its uh, policy so taiwan is not recognized by china as a country but china itself recognizes as a country so there in china uh, it was legalized now about the article we will discuss this important article it is regarding the issue of terrorism and the radicalization issue in the sri lanka and the situation that is going on what are the learnings for india here gs paper 2 and 3 both would be very very important here very important article this is a repeated issue and uh, in much detail in the hindi lesson i have explained this issue it is a repeated one we have many times we have talked about the issue of Pragya Thakur's statement and uh, the effigy of Gandhi when it was attacked and uh, people were showing guns to the Gandhi's effigy some days back and uh, Godse was held as nationalist and all in, in public discourse so this is the issue here the writer says Gandhi once said if you would ask me on a gunpoint to recite Gita I will not do that because it is not by force it is by my conscience it is by my soul so religion is a it's a individualistic issue it's a personal issue nobody can force that and nobody can uh, bring all these uh, uh, doctrines to the public sphere because governments are there institutions are there everything is there but when the religion dominates the public scene then it is not a good time for any country the the autonomy of the institutions and their efficiency the corruption issues and the right economy right decisions and democratic institutions and right participation these are the keys to run a great country not the religion and the religious discourse or the emotional talks of the religions religion so they will never help a country so the role of civil society the representation of people that is the ultimate thing here and the kind of uh, environment we have seen that is really unfortunate in recent years this is the issue uh, which is talking about the same issue of uh, <clears throat> this uh, factless campaign that went by and now the elections are over and results are to be announced so when the next government will come it will have many many responsibilities and many many concerns because it this country has gone in many wrong directions and the youth they are mainly jobless and they are uh, provoked emotionally in a very wrong sense and they are appreciating embracing the extremism that is really dangerous and they are supporting those kind of people who are the great supporter of the extremism and the ultra uh, right wing uh, uh, theology and that and the ideology there so that's really a concern in a diverse country like india where tolerance is the key and peace can be uh, remained there only with the issue of tolerance otherwise gandhi has no meaning in this country we have a symbol of gandhi for whole world to show but uh, we do not appreciate gandhi's ideology here that is a clear joke that that is the ultimate level of hypo hypocrisy so that is the issue so the next government would have a lot of responsibilities we have seen many many violations openly in this uh, uh, election campaign it was a factless logicless campaign more on emotional lines rhetorical lines and uh, it was shown like that 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 the national security is the only thing that we need today and we do not need economy we do not need jobs we, we, jobs we, we do not need uh, any education or anything that nothing was discussed even their core campaigns of um, Ramandir and all, they uh, were also not discussed anywhere. So the whole issue was on their national security. And that was really, really unfortunate because 
even this issue of national security that was flawed you see that terrorism and these militancy issues these are very smart moves and we need to counter that with the hyper uh, technological sense and uh, the very robust intelligence reports citizens support and their participation that would be the key rhetorics will not help countering the militancy attacks and these are not direct attacks these are not like uh, pakistan is uh, uh, bringing all its uh, uh, cannons and all on the borders and it is uh, daring us to fight and we are just uh, uh, provoking emotions in the people it is not the same time it's a different time and these rhetorics are never going to help they are just for the votes so that's the issue the logic is never matched here so that's why this election campaign was a factless campaign if this would have been an open war then these uh, national security issues would have been very much legitimate and even in the election times these would not have been very legitimate but here there is no war it's a terror attack it's a very very specific thing and it's a technical uh, countering that we need today so it needs silence and it needs a lot of efficiency and intelligence there instead of that we are making rhetorics there in the name of national security and we have diverted all the important crucial issues and we have taken this issue towards uh, national security and in the end towards religion so this is a factless nonsensical campaign and uh, what is the result uh, it is going to be uh, this country has to see that but certainly these issues should not be repeated this is the uh, request of the writer here this year this this particular uh, issue is regarding the sri lanka's uh, easter uh, day attack and after 10 years the haunting attacking times and uh, these uh, in, un unstable times people living in fear and the issue of extremism these are back to the normal for sri lanka which where civil war went for 26 years and they did not have any kind of answer to it any how they could tackle it after lo losing uh, thousands of people maybe lakhs of people they could establish peace 10 years back but again sri lanka has become very very sensitive and uh, the political handling is very very inefficient here so that's why this is a very haunting time for sri lanka they need balance they need peace there and they need to discuss all these things in much depth otherwise uh, uh, sri lanka may be boiling again and the issue of uh, extremist and ideologies and all and these issues are discussed here in this article we will discuss there and this issue is related to the civil society and its uh, important contribution and the issue of uh, democracies and uh, the way we are embracing extremism too much these days and all over the world in all these countries because of the political uh, campaigns and the political needs for the parties they are supporting extremist ideologies and these are the most dangerous trends here so a very important article for gs paper one two and three uh, all of them and a very important topic for essay also so we will discuss that here as i told you it's a, it's the artificial intelligence plus machine learning they are going to help these tech giants to tackle the issue of radicalization on the internet platform otherwise the proper use would not be there and any kind of major steps uh, these uh, governments they have to take here if the issue becomes so sensitive that it is creating riots in, in these countries then they would have to ban these uh, these uh, websites and all and that is the only way left so before that these these uh, tech giants like facebook twitter and all they have to take this responsibility and they need to apply these technologies so that the maximum curb is there on these extremist ideological issues and the uh, radicalization issues Okay, so that's the dangerous thing and they need to tackle that. It's a problem and they have the solution for that. Now, these are the words that I found today. Please uh, uh, use them into sentences and visit these websites like Collins Dictionary and uh, uh, the Cambridge uh, Dictionary and all. So you can get the right explanation in English only. Okay, maybe sometimes you are uh, uh, looking for the Hindi uh, versions of these words, but that is not going to be. Uh, helping a lot English explanations would help here see in the simple language taking stock of Islamic State 2.0 Islamic State 2.0 why because the territorial expanse or the territory of the so-called uh, caliphate is no more there they do not hold any ground any physical territory but 
their ideology is not that and actually it has taken a dangerous form there where they are radicalizing vulnerable youths all over this world and you see in this world there are many many problems there are many many frustrations with the youths joblessness and all these uh, issues and the blind following on the religion that is the main uh, key for these people to radicalize them very easily you must have seen uh, uh, many many uh, cases uh, on uh, facebook and all these uh, popular websites and all where a uh, uh, beautiful uh, women uh, they are messaging males from these countries and uh, uh, boys they are messaging females in in some countries and many many indians and uh, sri lankans and many people they have reported these kind of issues that unknown people they are messaging them and they are trying to radicalize them so this is the new way that they have adopted so this is the example real life example i'm giving you here that is the way that that, that, that islamic state is approaching this world again with the second version first version is ended they have been attacked and their territories are lost but now they have taken a new way and that is much more dangerous because how you can go uh, behind these people who are radicalized on the internet platform and you do not you do not know that who it who is radicalized and uh, who has changed its views and who is uh, supportive of this uh, caliphate issue and uh, who are ready to uh, convert into some other religion and all and all these sensitive issues are running on so it's very difficult thing so here the support of citizens support of uh, the people who are around these kind of people that is very much needed for the intelligence agencies and all so that is the solution here but the uh, real problem that we saw in sri lanka here that it ended a piece of dec uh, decade of peace and as i told you that the dynamics of islamic state and its radicalization they are approaching uh, the untouched territories like south asia south asia was uh, said to be the isolated territory for these uh, groups because they said that uh, uh, they had not declared any kind of province now they have declared a province in india also and they could not approach many youths here and they could not uh, radicalize many many youths there but now some examples are appearing in this attack they saw that dynamics were global the approach was global but perpetrators were locals means they were radicalized and uh, the similar kind of approaches they saw in uh, surabaya in indonesia in may last year in zoro in philippines in this january and the similar kind of attacks were there certainly the religion was the issue in their uh, radicalization because the people who got uh, radicalized the youth they were the blind believers of the religion that is for sure and that is the reason that we should not appreciate a blind following of the religion and that is why all these intellectual classes all over this world they are talking against this blind following issue that religion is no more that much important in this world and you sh we should not blindly follow the religious issues it's a personal issue and we should uh, keep it personal only and we, in the personal capacity also we should not be a blind follower there because when you are a blind follower you depend on some other ideology some other a person's thinking and you just blindly follow that that can take you anywhere that can uh, that person may end up in hell in a sense because it is the psychological hell where the person is radicalized and it is he is ready to take lives for innocent people and you see it can be any religion it can be any area it can be any group but the extremist ideology and the fanaticism and the blind following is the basic thing similar things everywhere here the same thing we saw there you see this is was started in 2011 mainly after that the al baghdadi uh, whose video just recently came again it appeared again that person started this in 2011 and he declared a attractive phenomena that uh, a caliphate we would establish and we will uh, go to jannat and all and all these uh, uh, things that were said by him and it attracted many many youths and they were radicalized with many ways and mainly the internet internet uh, platform uh, these people used to radicalize the youth and other important uh, uh, financiers they were also available for these people some uh, theological uh, doctrines were given by some egypt leaders and the uh, you see uh, the palestinian leader like abdullah azam and it was supported by the haqqani uh, network warlord jalaluddin haqqani and uh, al baghdadi was there to brainwash all these people globally and his message was very much uh, influential for these people so this is how they started and they mobilized 
द सुन्नी यूथ द सुन्नी मुस्लिम फेथ बिलीवर्स यूथ एवरीवेयर एंड देवर ऑस टू माइग्रेट टू द इस्लामिक कैलिफेट एंड दे वर सो वलरेबल इन देयर लाइव and they were so blind followers that they could get into this trap and many left their countries many uh, uh, maybe converted uh, towards uh, this religion and they went for this big fight and they lost their lives and many of them maybe they returned anyhow or maybe they are they have not returned but they are uh, living till now so they are taking the destruction of is its physical territory as a dream shattered so now they are roaming so des uh, desperate that uh, they want to attack these people they want to attack the western ideology the western authorities and uh, their uh, uh, religion is also a big issue that's why it is said that uh, the church was attacked church was attacked in philippine church was attacked in sri lanka in indonesia because of this issue that the is is uh, destroyed now its physical territories are destroyed now and these people are looking for a great revenge there so this also can be a particular angle here but you see these people certainly started with a particular pattern and now they have taken uh, a new way the national tawahid zamat that is uh, that was started in 14 in katankudin sri lanka and the leader was zahran muhammad hashim they are doing a lot of research on this man he was very much influential he was a great orator and he could uh, mobilize many youths and he could brainwash all these people and how that uh, happened intelligence reports were there against this person and indians also helped in this thing but they could not re recognize this issue and now when they have uh, seen the consequence of these all these uh, radicalization and all then they are being alert about it and now all are accepting that south asia today is a virtual caldron of uh, radical islamist extremist activity and certainly the blind following as i told you why the islamophobia phenomena is there why people are uh, uh, finding a connection with the is islam religion and the extremist ideology because these people were the religious blind followers but the issue is that they were exploited their blind following was exploited that is the issue so that is the biggest problem in this world today anyhow anyhow all these groups who want to remain in power who want to gain your votes or maybe who want uh, who want some uh, uh, destruction or maybe who want to impose some ideology then they are just exploiting these blind beliefs that's the issue and pivotal role of, of the of the net internet as i told you that uh, it's a direct to home jihad because they could connect with these people who are sitting in their homes and who are accessing your facebook or some uh, other websites and all so that is why this is a bigger danger here because they have pen penetrated uh, uh, into people's homes into their personal lives and you see how many parents are there who are asking about uh, uh, their uh, facebook chats to their kids i think rarely uh, these kind of parents are there these kind of friends are there and rarely anybody is ready to reveal all these chats and all but these things are happening so it's a collective responsibility and for the whole world and for uh, all the citizens in this world it's a responsibility that anybody who is uh, uh, provoking them in a sense then they need to report it otherwise we cannot contain that issue because we cannot ban internet everywhere that's the issue everything is running on this uh, platform and here this platform is used by this uh, virtue of direct to home jihad and these handlers so that's the case that is uh, totally out now and uh, you see many issues are there like in muslim oppressed families in sri lanka close knit webs of the family relationships has ensured secrecy means if anybody is radicalizing them then they do not reveal it the secrecy remains there and that prevented leakage of information thereby opting for methods of old time anarchists and reliance on online pro 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 uh, propaganda and social media was vastly increased and is has also refashioned several of its existing relationships so this is how it may bolster its position again maybe it has lost ground but it has not lost the psychological grounds and the connection and uh, intercommunication grounds there it is connecting with people through the help of social media so the lone wolf attacks are no more there these are the attacks which are executed by locals who were radicalized on the uh, website there so that is the real case here and ideas have an enormous impact and you can see here it is all the radicalization and when your mind is stern and when your mind is making a will about something then you do not care about your life also so that's the case here and uh, it's all a negative thing and uh, lives are at stake
careers are at stake people's uh, mental balance and society's balance everything is at stake and why because it is the ambience that is created that people are no more uh, talking with each other and they are more using social media platforms they are believing the people who are uh, uh, trying to mobilize others on the social media platforms and all so this is the real uh, danger here this, this needs to be changed and the people who who are living in isolation and who are not talking go talk, talking to anyone and maybe they are involved in some some uh, very negative activities and all then these people are not reporting about them uh, about these uh, these kind of groups or uh, people so that's the problem here okay now in india also it has uh, announced a province so it's a important lesson for india also that south asia is no more isolated and this uh, hashim that person who executed this uh, particular attack and now uh, he is killed so he was linked to jihadis in tamil nadu and kerala so it's a alarming situation for india also now national investigation agencies and all, all these bodies they need to be very much alerted and they need to do further investigations there but as i told you the important support of the people and their awareness will be the key here otherwise we can never contain this radicalization issue because always some youth would be frustrated and always there would be risk that some people may exploit their belief system may exploit their problems of the lives and this is the uh, basis and the, this is the uh, common case in all the radicalization cases okay so that's the issue here as i told you uh, all these things that i explained to you these are the simple case and the striking example of zahran muhammad hashim as i told you it's a typical case and especially for the uh, country like india we need to be very much alert about uh, these kind of persons who are active here on social media platform because they do not need preaching uh, in some rallies or in some uh, particular organized meets they can preach all these things in uh, private uh, facebook groups and all so that's the case here next task of restoring democracy here the writer says that the greatest kind of uh, trouble for humanity that is on a rise because many people they have started believing that extremist ideologies are also the solutions to many problems in the society to, uh, society today you see mussolini was a tyrannous leader and he was hanged in italy now some people and these are not uh, small in number bigger numbers and these groups they are coming and they are honoring mussolini that's the case these are not normal changes these can trigger a very negative kind of phase there where people are ready to reset benedict mussolini they are appreciating uh, nazi ideology also sometimes uh, they are appreciating hitler li like re leaders and they are choosing uh, trump like leaders who are uh, divisive by nature and uh, they are talking about uh, always the uh, other is present in their uh, uh, in their rhetorics and their speeches the other is always attacked other can be there as opposition other can be there a, a particular religious group or any other, other particular group so these uh, these kind of people who believe in extremism who believe in extremist ideologies their support is on a rise and people are embracing these kind of leaders and here in india also when uh, they are uh, uh, hailing godse as the ultimate nationalist and openly bravely they are supporting his existence and they they said that uh, real patriot patriot was the good say that means gandhi was the anti national person because that, uh, they were not of a same ideology and that person killed because of the ideological difference so that means gandhi was anti national according to their uh, talks so they are openly openly saying these things and in the election campaigns so what kind of joke is going on in this country but you see people are the bigger problem is that people are uh, embracing those kind of uh, talks those kind of arguments there and they are ready to thrash the gandhian ideology there because people are uh, living in uh, much frustration today so they always embrace the extremist issues they always embrace the force they always embrace the thrashing they always embrace the sweeping statements and uh, those kind of ideologies which are boosting the emotions which are provoking the emotions so this is how some people feel satisfied but actually what kind of consequence this will bring that is to be seen here and the level of intellectual crisis is that uh, in this country that majority is uh, supporting the godse 
uh, issue that they are believing that Gold Godse was the ultimate uh, nationalist and a candidate who is a terror accused who is openly claiming this issue and she is nowhere apologetic about it after some political pressure she uh, did that and she brought some kind of a mere apology but she was a stern believer of that and with a very uh, a stern stand looking into eyes she was saying that uh, Pat, uh, he was a real patriotic person means Gandhi was anti-national and we have the only symbol of Gandhi to show this whole world that means it is the ultimate level of hypocrisy by the government side that one uh, one side they are showing everything about Gandhi they are uh, uh, telling everything uh, to any foreigner in this uh, country who is visiting there they are telling everything about Gandhi its books its ideology its uh, way and uh, taking India's image with the Gandhi's Gandhian symbolism there that means it's the ultimate level of hypocrisy they are not uh, arresting these kind of people who are openly uh, putting guns on the Gandhi effigy and who are uh, claiming that uh, the killer of Gandhi was a nationalist and nothing is done only a simple apology is demanded there that that means it's there is a great support and it's a plot against Gandhian ideology and that is the danger there so th all over the world where real wars are no more there terror attacks are a big issue terror regions are a big issue but they see they they need a different kind of a technical uh, strategy to curb and we have to counter the militancy and the terrorist, terrorist attacks and all with the ultimate level of brilliance intelligence and uh, uh, these uh, awareness and these rhetorics are never going to help the terrorism issue because it is not a war in the war you provoke emotions in the people so that they can support the war and they can support uh, the forces and they will end the enemy but here the enemy is hidden it is not an open attack on us it needs a lot of precision precision there and when they are taking uh, advantage of all the rhetorics and uh, they are taking advantage of all the valor, valor of the forces and uh, uh, they have changed all the discourse towards towards this uh, national security issue ignoring all the crucial problems of, the, of this country that means it's a really dangerous time it's a shameful and sorrowful event where in these times they are saying that Gandhian ideology was not good and the killers of the Gandhi they were the real nationalist people that means it's all a particular way it's all a particular trend that they are uh, moving in this country and they want to establish something something really uh, a situation where extremism is on a rise emotions are provoked and people can be exploited very easily because when people are embracing extremism when they are thinking in a uh, angry way then their minds are not working they are thinking by heart they are thinking by emotions their minds are not working and in democracy we need mind when people are going to vote then they do not need emotions they need mind there that who is a, a, appropriate a person but before the elections they are provoking all kinds of emotion all campaigns all rallies national security forces 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 and the religion issue in the end that means they want to mobilize people just with the emotions and that is the case where we need to understand this connection that wherever extremism is is there there only the terrorism terrorism is there at that place extremism is there without extremism there is no terrorism that means when we are defining terrorism then extremism is the very basic thing that identifies terrorism so we need to clarify uh, this issue and here all over the world when these extreme ideologies ultra right wing uh, groups they are supported by normal public then it is not a good move because this world uh, cannot uh, tolerate with the ultra right wing ideologies they embrace extremism and they claim that whatever we think is right and the other person is wrong this is the uh, this is the basic thing there whatever they think that is right they would strongly support that and they would uh, totally ignore the other part there that is questioning them or that that may be uh, not according to them so they would uh, thrash that other uh, group or the other ideology and they would only believe what they think is right so that is the ultra right wing ideology and that is being sup uh, supported by the people and why uh, this thing is there you see real wars are not there as I told you only terrorism uh, issue is there that is very much dangerous real wars are not there where emotions are provoked so when there are no real wars then people have forgotten the consequences of the war so in, at that time emotions work so these smart leaders they know that uh, emotions are the key provoke emotions maybe there is a war or no war but 
emotions will unite people and they uh, would vote uh, for those people who are talking about those emotions who are able to provoke those emotions so that's the uh, smart move there and it is being used by many many leaders in this uh, world they gave the example of a deputy prime minister of uh, uh, italy there matteo salvini they gave the example of uh, spain there where socialist party has won the election but certainly the uh, ultra right wing faction is very much dominant there in people's mind more than half people they are supporting these moves so that's the case that if these kind of rhetorics will not stop then they can easily create the surveillance state there in the name of national security and they can know about each and everything and you see it gives the example of hitler also what hitler did it uh, it befriended the rich industrial class destroyed the german parliament and uh, the use of capital which which was uh, there too much with these uh, industrialists and all and that he used the capital and whatever uh, intelligence and all all these uh, agencies were there whatever support was av available to uh, to do the surveillance on the people that was done but today you see enormous capacities are there an unbelievable uh, technology advancement is there if somebody wants to think in, in the hitler's way then it's very much supportive environment there so it is the responsibility of the people that they do not support the extremism in ideology and it is it would be nowhere different from the terrorism aspect if people would uh, start embracing the extremist ideologies it would be no difference because that would lead to terrorism only because terrorism starts from the extremist ideology and extremist thinking and supporting your own ideology and uh, rejecting the other one and never accepting the uh, thing that is not according to you so it starts from there and it reaches up to terrorism so that is the case that we need to understand there he is giving the example of uh, brazil russia and china where anti people regimes are working you must have seen the uh, russian org organized crime uh, uh, mafia videos and all how freely they are moving because somewhere it is supported by the uh, supported by the state if the ambience is uh, silent people are not complaining about anything then everything is go everything goes well and they are claiming that democracy is vibrant but if somebody is uh, raising questions somebody is uh, questioning uh, about these things then that person would be silent that would be made silent that would be crushed so this is not a democracy this is these are anti people regimes in the case of china we have seen there uh, they has been established as a single party system and uh, uh, these are uh, inflicting many many restrictions on the people social media is banned youtube is banned wikipedia is banned and uh, the people who are supporting governments and all they are having a raise there and the questioners they are never supported so in brazil russia china like big countries there are not a uh, true democracies india was safe till now but now in india these kind of uh, uh, ideologies they are supported here so it's a very very alarming thing for this country because it's a most diverse country and uh, in this country with, with the tolerance only we can live and as i told you enlightened anarchy is needed means people are educated people know about these uh, uh, smart tactics by the political class and people can think in a logical way because people has education so that kind of level is needed and then only the uh, the robust democracy would be there otherwise if people are jobless people are living in frustration people are not having good education and there are no opportunities then they can be easily exploited and then this is the way that democracies are destroyed so this uh, uh, ambience needs a big change there so we do not need just first aid care we need serious cures and these institutions their autonomy that need to be reinstalled any government that come maybe that is the same government is uh, repeated or maybe the new government is coming they have a serious responsibility now otherwise if the same goes on if the same ambience goes on and all these religious issues all these uh, uh, ultra ideological issues they remain then this country has to see a very dangerous future and we need to be ready about that because the way people are uh, lynching in the name of cows what is this this is this is the embrace of the extremist ideological sense and thinking only about your own way and rejecting all other ways this is the uh, extremist thinking and this is the ultra right wing ideology extreme conservatism which is there 
and religion plays a big role in this issue so that needs to be changed here so the government has a big big responsibility now and civil society which has uh, held this world uh, after world war 2 and uh, for many many years it has supported democracy democracies has earned many many times uh, they have earned many many times they have been made many mistakes but democracies were not failed because the civil society and the active participation of the people citizens were there so that needs to exist there and civil society needs to be bolstered here otherwise it is not a guarantee that popular leaders they are honest and they are supporting a balanced way of the society it is not a guarantee maybe these people are so smart that they can make people believe that extremist ideologies are right and they are taking society towards a ultra right wing and ultra conservative way where only majorities they would survive and it would be a very difficult phase for the minority but they should always remember whenever there is a suppressed, suppressed uh, group or the society then frustration takes place and frustration always gives birth to negativities and very dangerous times these societies they always see history tells it about uh, tells about, tells us about these consequences and many many examples are there in the history but we are not caring about those issues so that's why democracy needs to be there and uh, these people are so smart that they always try to make people believe that democracy is not a good uh, institution and maybe a single party system or any other form of tyranny that is a better way and they will always say that uh, kingdoms are better and uh, democracies are not good they will always try to put these things and they will always try to make a system that they will always stay there they will always exist there and there would be no uh, elections and all so their ways will always go towards those kind of ways so here we need to uh, be aware about these things and democracies they have art but it has not failed us that we should believe and these uh, these institutions they need uh, extreme support and where institutions are strong people are enlightened and educated then nobody can take advantage of them and nobody can exploit them next about the troubled teens you see it's a report by national family health survey that started in 1990s and the fourth survey was done in 1516 according to this report in the eastern part of india where uh, northeast is also included where we have a general perception about the northeast that that uh, many areas they have matri uh, archaeal society and girls are not that much uh, that much suppressed there but even in these cases teen pregnancies are a major issue from 10 to 19 these are called teen years and uh, teen pregnancies are happening in bigger numbers and you see most of them they are having very bad health anemic these girls are and you see these are uh, like kids only till the age of 18 the girl is like a kid only she does not have that maturity she cannot handle many situations it's a age of confusion it's a age of physical transformation so already she is troubled with many things and and the pregnancy in this age that's a devastating thing for the whole life and you see it is uh, devastating for the kid also which is about to born and uh, you see many lives are lost in this age why because they are uh, having uh, they are getting pregnant in the teen years so anemic these are uh, an uh, antenatal care is not available because these are the mainly backward areas where uh, uh, girls are married be- uh, before the age of 18 and they are having pregnancies before uh, 19 years of age and postnatal care is also uh, not available improved sanitation facilities are also not available so all these uh, things are combinedly there and the numbers are huge you see the percentage bihar 12.2% assam 13.6% tripura 18.8% West Bengal 18.3 percent, Jharkhand, Andhra Pradesh around 12 percent numbers are there. So these are huge numbers, and we need to think about this issue because it is taking a lot of toll and a lot of lives of these uh, teen age girls. And anywhere this is not supportive. Before the age of 20, no girl should be pregnant, and uh, 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 it should it should get a healthy age, a healthy body before that. Because at the age of 18 or 17 or 16, she is never healthy with the pregnancy. That's the case. next psl we see 46 we are going to send a radar imaging satellite resat 2b 
and many more are in the line reset after to reset reset 2b we will send reset 2b r1 reset 2b r2 reset 1a 1b 2a so all are in line and you see these are supporting the newer technologies the radar imaging satellites are very much advanced in any kind of environment cloudy rainy or in the night time also they can take all the pictures and they are sending heavy data so this is very difficult to uh, create these kind of satellites but we have the ability and we have created a great image of our country that we are much more capable and we are doing that and you see the uh, the weight is only 615 kilogram that is why PSLV is taking this otherwise uh, the Chandrayaan 2 which we are going to send that is having more than 2500 kgs weight so GSLV only would be capable to take that and GSLV Mark 3 uh, is the version there and uh, uh, I think FS10 uh, the name is given to that so both names are correct with that so it is for the Chandrayaan 2 GSLV will, will take it and here the PSLV C46 that rocket is taking this uh, radar imaging satellites and you see radars are capable of uh, uh, taking pictures and all these uh, observations through clouds also maybe our prime minister is saying that uh, uh, radar cannot capture uh, planes also that was the utter nonsense but uh, here that is the reason that ISRO is highlighting this issue that it's a radar imaging satellite that can work in any kind of environment. So it's an important thing and you see it helps in disaster management, forestry, agriculture, geology, finding minerals and all. So it helps in a lot of areas. So they may ask you about those also. Okay, so PSLV C46 guys, it's important data. Next, High Court of Delhi has said that the United Nations is not a state because in the article 12 we have the definition of the state in uh, article 226 high court decides about cases so here <coughs> delhi high court says that un is not a state one person has uh, complained against uno and it has filed a suit against a un body so first uh, there was a provision that uh, uh, if you have to uh, if you want to sue any other country then we have to take uh, permission from the indian government now government says that it is not necessary because un is not a state we do not consider un as a state so the uh, allowance or the permission is not needed and any person can sue un as a body because it's a organization as we take it okay and uh, one more important thing that uno and its officials they enjoy immunity under the un uh, privilege and immunities act 1947 that we are also a signatory and we are giving immunity to all these uh, uh, un officials and all okay so that's a different thing but un as a body it's not a state it's only an organization and anybody can sue it next regarding the exit polls you see under Arctic, uh, uh, rpa act of 1951 we inserted our uh, section 126a and now election commission bans the exit polls during election times and that's why only after 6 30 pm yesterday these exit polls were out and all these uh, informations were out because since 7 am uh, on uh, 11th april this ban started and it lasted till 6 30 pm on 19th of may and that was declared by election commission according to section 126a opinion polls are allowed but uh, exit polls are banned during the election time and this uh, time is announced by the election commission of india so this was a case uh, when uh, uh, election commission and courts uh, they decided about this issue and they said that exit polls they may influence people because these are much more reliable because the exit polls are those when people are coming out after uh, after using their uh, uh, voting power then when they when they are coming out of those booths then their opinions are taken that whom you have voted then they gave information that we have voted uh, congress or the bjp or the, any other party then uh, these uh, observations are becoming a sample for this exit polls and these are done by these popular media houses or not so this is about the exit polls now for the questions come in the come in the pib session in the evening and we will discuss many many questions there and, and i will give you additional five to ten questions also uh, to solve there so thanks a lot keep watching it was amit sani pdf you will get